Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to go over the Cheap Manager class and how to set up functions that you can then call via the console command. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty straightforward tutorial. We're going to make a Cheap Manager class, we're going to make our own function, and then we're going to call that function from the console command and you know have it do something. So we're going to set it up. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll try to make the character uh, jump higher. <clears throat> so basically we'll we'll have the we'll have the console command it'll take one input parameter and it'll just be a float value and that will determine the jump uh jump z uh of our character. So to get started, I created a new project. Uh, I'm using N for Unreal Engine 4.24.2. So just keep that in mind. Um <clears throat> and it's a C++ project. Um, so when you do create the project, uh, it's a third-person template project, C++, in Unreal Engine 4.24.2. So to get started, uh, we're first not we're not going to create a class just yet, because uh, we need to create um, a player controller, <clears throat> because it's inside the player controller class that um, we apply our cheat manager class. <clears throat> so let's create. Um, a third person uh, character controller or player controller. So let's just right click in the content browser, blueprint class, and make a player controller. We'll just call this BP third person player controller. And we'll also create a game mode just to have it and that we can apply that to our level. So for easier management, I guess. So new blueprint class, and we could just do game mode, and we kind of call this BP third person game mode. And then in our game mode, we can add our player controller, and we can add our default pawn. Uh, I think we could just type it third person character. And I think that's all I really need right now. So we can compile and save our game mode. And then in our level, under the world settings, we could just apply our override. So BP third person game mode. So now we have our game mode set up. And now we have also access with our third person player, player controller. You'll see here, we have cheat class. So it's a class of cheat manager and the cheat manager is not created in shipping build. So this is really just for debugging purposes. Honestly, you're not gonna ship with it. Uh, you probably could ship with it if you so choose, but it's really just for debugging. So we'll come back to this when we create the class in C++ and set everything up. So let's create the C++ class. So we can go to file, new C++ class. We can show all classes. Just type in cheat manager and you'll have a cheat manager. Uh, I named my project cheat manager, so you're gonna see a lot of cheat managers in here, but you should just see this one. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And we'll call this third person cheat manager. Doesn't have to be anything more special than that. And we're gonna let this <coughs> compile the new code and add it to our project. So um, we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so now our cheat manager class has been created. We got our header file and we got our source file here in Visual Studio. Uh, so what we need to do in our header, we gotta declare our function. So when we declare a function, uh, it has to be a u function. So let's type in u function. And it needs a, a function specifier called exec. Let me spell u function correctly. So we have this uh, uh, specifier here. And this is telling Unreal that this function can be executed from the in-game console, the console commands. And uh, this can only be used in certain types of classes. So this can be used, I believe, in player controllers, uh, game mode, and cheat manager classes. There might be another one I'm missing, but um, I'll, I'll link a bunch of documentation as well in the description for this video so you can do a little research yourself. But basically, you need, just need to know, okay, Unreal knows that this function can be called from our console command. So, now that we have that, let's, uh, we want to make it a void. We don't want it to return anything, so it's going to be a void function. And we'll call it uh, set player jump height. And we want it to take one parameter, so we're going to do a float. We'll call this uh, new jump z. 
and there's our function. So now that we have our function declared, we actually have to uh, define it and actually give functionality. So we can jump <clears throat> into our source file, or you know, if if Visual Studio is fast enough for you, you can always just right click and set up yourself. But <clears throat> right now it's not, it's not a big deal. So what we can do is in our source, we can set up the function ourselves. I believe that's how we named it. New jump Z. Void. <clears throat> and there we go. We have our function declared. Now we just got to tell it to do something. So obviously we need access um, to our player character and I believe possibly the player uh, movement. So we have to include some directories here. Uh, player character, maybe? Uh, let's see how our folder is set up. So cheat manager. So cheat, sometimes I don't like how that doesn't. So cheat manager, uh, character. And then I believe, uh, hash include, is it game? Framework, and then character movement component. So now what we have to do is uh, be able to get our player character. In order to do that, we need to have access uh, to gameplay statics. So we have to include that as well. So hash include, and it's under kismet, and gameplay statics. And gameplay statics has functionality that allows us to get the uh, player character. So what we can do is it's going to be a class A cheat manager character. If it'll let me type that A cheat manager character. It's really not letting me do that that way. That's weird. A cheat manager character. I'll just type it out. And we're just going to call this player character equals, and then we have to cast again to our A cheat manager class. Let me just click it. And here we can use the function from U gameplay statics. It has a get player character. So get player character. And it needs a couple parameters. Let me see if you'll see. Uh, it needs the world and the, a player index. So by default, our player index is going to be zero. So what we can do is we have an act, we have a function called get world, which will return the world, and then we can just tell it zero. So if all goes well, uh, this should return our player character. Uh, I did get player camera manager. Whoops, get player character. Sorry about that. So that should work. So we do you get so get player character and then we have get world. I'm not sure why this is given it's a problem, but we'll let it compile, we'll jump to any problems there. So now if our player character is valid, so if player character that's when we can access its character movement component and set a new jump. Z. So just to tell you a little bit what we're doing in our player character here. Let's open up the blueprint. We have a character movement component. And what we're looking for is jump Z velocity. That's just going to pretty much tell you how fast your jump is or how strong it is. So that's the, mod that's the property we want to uh, modify. So let me better close that. So now what we can do is a player character. And then there, we should have a option for get movement component. So let's make a new variable for that. Uh, so it should be, I believe, how, what's the movement component here? Let's do a little more research. So character movement. 
let's not completely break Visual Studio, but let's see. You character movement component. We can call this just uh, movement comp or movement component equals something like that. Let's see. So I guess we might have to cast to you care to movement component. Now that should be good. So now we have to do another if. So if movement component, we can say uh, movement component dot uh, jump C velocity equals new jump Z. So hopefully this all works. Let me just review this get world. So we're casting here, we got that. All seems kosher to me. So let's just try to compile. And we'll see what happens. Let me first close that up on real. And let's hit F5 to start our compile. And let's see if this actually gives us an error. Okay, so it doesn't give us an error, so that's good. <laughs> so let's see if our actual logic works. So right now, by default, the jump Z velocity is 600. So we'll type in a number significantly smaller than that. And we'll also type in a number significantly lower than that. And we'll see if it works. OK, now that we're back in the editor, before we even try to use this console command, we have to go back into our player controller. And we have to tell it to use our man cheat manager class. Because right now it's just using cheat manager, but we have a new one. So third person cheat manager. So we can compile that, and now we should be good. Because we have our third person game mode, we have the controller here. So now if we play, you know, we're running around, we have the normal behavior here, but now we can open up our console and I believe we call it set player jump height. And we type in like a hundred, right? Nothing visibly happens or anything like that. But now if we try to jump, it's much less than 600. So we can't jump as high. We could set it back to 600 and now we're jumping normal again. We could also set it to 6,000 and we can just go wee and you know, <laughs> jump super high. So that's great. Uh, so that's pretty much how the cheat manager class works. One thing I do want to show you though is a pretty interesting uh, addition to uh, your U function declaration here. What you can do, there's a meta tag and you can, it's called override native name. And basically what this does is it then allows you to, what the name suggests, override the name. So for example, if you want to call this player.setJumpZ, for example. What will happen now, uh, I'll also compile at the same time. Uh, what will happen now is when we type into our console command, uh, you'll be able to call this function by typing in player.setJumpZ and then uh, the value you want to use. And honestly, when you have more than one value, you can, you know, as long as you set up the function correctly, um, you sh you'll be able to put in as many values as you want for these functions. Obviously, obviously you should limit how many input parameters you ha your function has just for efficiency purposes. But, you know, I'll show you just one parameter um, just to get the point across. So let's wait for this to finish the compile, and then uh, we'll jump back into the editor. Okay, we're back in the editor. We can play. 
Now if we type in player and we get player dot set jump z. And again, you can set it to like a thousand and it changes the property. So the reason why you would want to do this is because uh, you might want to categorize your your functions. So, you know, just in case you have really obscure names, like it's, you could, you can, um, you can have like a whole set under player dot. So, you know, this will change everything about the player, but you can have other things like attribute dot and it changes like a player attribute regarding, I don't know, skills or something like that. Or, uh, if you use the gameplay ability system, you know, you can set up attributes and you can manipulate them that way. Um, you can maybe have like a level dot and it does things in your level. Um, it's just a good way to categorize everything and make it might make things easier down the line. Just in case you might forget what you actually named your function, you can at least maybe remember which category it was under. That way you can be like, okay, it's under player dot and be like, oh, okay, there's like, you know, 10 functions. I remember it by the name because it's on the list now. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, make sure to like the video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below or in the description of the video, you'll find a link to our Discord server. In that Discord server, there's a channel for uh, questions and answering. Uh, there's a bunch of different channels about all different facets of uh, game development, whether it be art, coding, blueprints, uh, etc. It's mostly focused on Unreal Engine 4 development. Uh, but if you have any questions or concerns, that would be the best way to reach me. Um, so feel free to join that. And uh, for now, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.